Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday webcast. As always, I am here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. And can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech extraordinaire, Miss Angelica. And today, viewers, we have the pleasure of having Miss Taya Fontenet here. And she is the policy and research coordinator for the Water Collaborative of Greater New Orleans. And you know this is a show that's near and dear to my heart. Cause I'm a I'm a you know, I'm a southern girl myself and my family originated in Louisiana. So this is very close to my heart. And she's here to talk to us about the Clean Water Act of twenty twenty three and explain what that is and what we can do to bolster it, and how it can help people. Thank you so much for being here today, Taya. We really appreciate you coming on the show. It's great. We, um, as soon as we heard about it, we wanted to talk to you. And um, I read the whole report, and I was like, this is so exciting. People need to know about it. And it's a short show, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, but thank you for being here. Can you tell our listeners about the history of the Clean Water Act just as a basis so they understand that and what happened to it? Yeah. Our nation's waters face severe contamination, making them unsafe for human contact, recreation, and wildlife. So in response to numerous environmental disasters and public outcry, President Nixon established the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, through an executive order in December of 1970. Soon after, Congress overhauled the previous Federal Water Pollution Control Act of 1948 to enact the Clean Water Act that we know today on October 18, 1972. So at that time, the Clean Water Act became and remains the primary federal law governing surface water pollution, which grants the EPA authority to regulate the health of the nation's navigable waters which includes rivers, lakes, and streams. Its objective was to restore the integrity of these waters, setting minimum standards for waste discharges across industries with the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System that is overseen by the EPA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers through the use of permits. So over the past 50 years, the Clean Water Act has been frequently amended and defended which serving as a framework for states and tribes to enforce the baseline protection for waterways. So over the time, the interpretation of the law began to expand, especially when dealing with wetlands. So under the 2006 Supreme Court ruling for Rapanos versus the United States, the definition of waters of the United States grew to encompass areas with a significant nexus to navigable, navigable bodies of water whose pollution could adversely affect protected water. So this expansion has resulted in a broad interpretation of the extent to which water bodies and adjacent lands fall under EPA regulatory authority, which has led to further confusion and litigation. Yeah. So the recent attention to the Clean Water Act stems from the landmark Sackett versus EPA Supreme Court case that was just decided in May of 2023. It all began in 2007 when landowners Michael and Chantel Sackett began construction on their home in a subdivision near Priest Lake in Idaho. A few months into their construction, the EPA filed a complaint and claimed that they were in the violation of the Clean Water Act, asserting that the wetlands on their property were considered navigable waters that could not be filled in. So this led to orders to restore the property to its natural state and included daily penalties. Wow. So initiating a lawsuit in 2008, the Sackets argued that the filled wetland was not a protected water of the United States, as it had dry land between it and other bodies of water, arguing that they were free from EPA regulation and penalties. Uh, so the case and the language of the act was litigated for years until it reached the Supreme Court and was decided in a 5-4 decision in favor of the Sackets last May. 
Okay. So this ruling clarified that the act exclusively applies to wetlands with a continuous surface connection to the U.S. waters, which limited the Clean Water Act's uh, ability to protect many of the nation's waterways and wetlands. Wow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's quite a story. Um, and it's such a, a story of resistance, too, with um, people fighting for it for all of those years. Um, it's yeah, it's really uh, something. So that's why it had to be re- reintroduced because of that case, because of the Supreme Court case. Okay. And it seems like they're trying to find any way to maneuver and alter this act to not have to protect our water. Mm-hmm which is very frightening. Um, So with that being said, can you tell us a little bit about what the Clean Water Act of 2023 actually is and why it's so important right now? The Clean Water Act of 2023 was introduced into the House of Representatives by Democratic Representative Rick Larson of Washington State along with some co-sponsors on October 18th, 2023, which was the 51st anniversary of the original passing. So currently over 130 House Democrats have joined on as co-sponsors. And what makes this bill so crucial is that it's the, it's only through congressional amendments to the Clean Water Act that uh, national protections that were removed by the courts can be reinstated. So this proposal seeks to affirm Congress's original commitment to the act and address concerns about the EPA and Army Corps interpretation of the law, which has been seen by many as deviating from Congress's original intent. Always. Always. In every situation. Of course. It always goes back to Congress and how we need strong bipartisan support. Yeah. So it seeks to accomplish this by explicitly defining protected water resources to include all water subject to the tide of U.S. uh, waters. Um, And so that will reinstate unified national protection. Additionally, the proposal aims to strengthen the act by replacing the previously contested phrase navigable water to eliminate the confusion that was caused through the many years of litigation. And so, given that approximately half of our states do not or cannot, by their own laws, protect water beyond the federal provision outlined in the Clean Water Act, it is crucial to fortify the legislation as much as possible to ensure that there's consistent protection for water resources throughout the country. So, current estimates indicate a nationwide loss of protection for over 50% of wetlands and more than 70% of rivers and streams. Oh. Very, very disheartening. Oh, and yeah, that's, um, I didn't know that stat at all. That's kind of devastating. It's frightening. Yeah. Yes, that was released by the uh, sponsors of the bill uh, through their own independent research. Yeah. Um, and so this is especially crucial in Louisiana's Mississippi River Delta, where we oh, house yeah. about 40% of the continental the U.S.'s coastal wetlands. And we are already facing a multitude of challenges that goes beyond, you know, the stripping of this law. Right. And since 1930, so at least 90 years, Louisiana has lost approximately 1,900 square miles of land, which is roughly the size of Delaware. Wow. Um, So this issue hits very close to home and to support all of the other wetlands that we have throughout the country. So Right now, being able to to protect water in every way and have it in mm -hmm. law is um, really important because you know, corporations and things like that, especially here in Michigan and really around the U.S., we see corporations dump like, you know, chemicals and PFAS, all kinds of terrible things into the water. Um, Mm -hmm. And also why they're also why they're on the water, right? Why they're like sending ships across and things like that, polluting and dumping um, waste and all kinds of terrible stuff into the water. So being able to protect that now um, in, in the face of climate change is, uh, you know, it, it, it has to happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> like this legislation is, um, it, it's not only going to save lives, but uh, it's, it, it's the only way to cushion us a little bit through climate change. It really is. Um, yeah. I think people are unaware also of how many species of wildlife and flora 
reside in our wetlands. Oh, yeah. And a lot of them are very, very yeah. integral to those ecosystems. Yeah. And if, if, if they're damaged in any way, it could change the whole ecosystem of, of, of the entire continent, if not the world. Yeah. No, yeah. it's really, really important. And it's important that America leads in that and saying, mm -hmm. like, we, we're going to protect our waters. Come, mm -hmm. No matter what, we're going to protect them. Yeah. Um, Taya, do you think that it'll get passed into law? Do we have a good chance of this? What does it look like? It's very complicated because personally with this law, I don't believe that it will pass, especially due to the current partisan landscape that's in the House of Representatives. Damn. Um, but there's always a chance for a future possibility of a, a finer tuned version of this passing with the help of others from the other side, um, especially with sustained public support. Um, because while this bill does represent progress, it is not without flaws, just like sure. the original act. So there are definitely things that we would want to see included or updated in the final version of this bill. Mm -hmm. uh, one includes that there's a provision that grants the EPA administrator authority to periodically examine and potentially exclude protected waters. And so we believe that this provision could undermine the legislation's effectiveness yeah. um, and that it could be misused by future administrations and administrators. So, um, and also this bill uh, seeks to codify existing exemptions for non-point solution sources such as agriculture, mining, and construction uh -huh. that desperately need regulation. And so I believe that, you know, if anyone wants to show their support to get this passed or for a future uh, versions that they make sure that they stay informed about the legislation, know what is being proposed and express their support to their uh, representatives and also engage in very, you know, lucrative community initiatives. And also spread the word on social media. That's always the best place we can use nowadays to garner mm -hmm. public support. You can share this Water Wednesday with folks, and you can even share it with your community and have a have a showing of it um, so that people can understand it and learn as much as they can. We're going to um, have some links. Um, uh, you provided us some links, I think, Taya. Um, so we're going to have so, so that you can read the act, the summary of it, and all of those things um, in the description box down below, um, and and be able to really plug in and get to know all there is to know about it. And we want our listeners to do that. Please do share this. <laughs> Please use this as an educational tool. Absolutely. Um, and to plug in, that's uh, that's really the purpose for Water Wednesday is so that we can do that. Um, this was all such vital information for not just us, but our viewers to learn or be reintroduced to. Um. Is there any final thoughts that you want to leave with our viewers in regards to everything that we've talked about and discussed today? Yeah, I just want to leave off on a positive note and say that it's important to remember that all of our collective efforts are needed to preserve the integrity of our nation's resources. So as we move forward, it's important to stay engaged and motivated to address these dynamic challenges. Um, because together we can make a lasting impact on environmental project protection, just as we did with the original act of 1972. That's right. So that's really what's the most important to stay active. It really is. Stay mm -hmm, yeah, stay active. It really is hopeful to me too to have people like you. Um, I read the report. You guys did just a, a, a holy cow job. You know, yeah. to have people like you fighting for the fine tuning of it. Um, <laughs> look, looking at at every individual piece and, and making sure that it's right. And um, uh, that that does create a lot of hope for me. Thank you. I'm glad you're on the job, Taya. <laughs> Absolutely. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Thank you. As well. Um, and oh, thanks. Early years of our campaign. So it's very inspiring to know that we have people all across the country who are fighting a good fight with us. Yeah. And I mean, being able to show nationwide solidarity with each other, it gets mm -hmm. stuff done. It really yeah. does. Uh, um, that's one of my favorite parts about this show is we're able to really show solidarity in a way and, and learn and, and show other people and all those other things, be able to plug in, um, give people action steps to be able to plug in in different campaigns and things. 
Um, it's it's so important, vitally uh, important for the movement and um, and solidarity as always. We gotta we gotta show up for each other. Exactly. Absolutely, we have to. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you um, so much, Taya, for the work that you do, and um, and uh, we just it's wonderful work and. It creates a lot of hope with all of us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you, Nicole, for always going down this journey with me. Um, I, it's every week it gets better and better, and yeah. uh, the work and the show get better. So I appreciate appreciate you so much. To our viewers and listeners out there, learn as much as you can about the Clean Water Act of 2023. <laughs> get plugged in. Um, these you know times are really really hard. Look out for each other. Um, call each other. Try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye. Be careful, homie, you're spilling it.